Yes, hello from Voss. Welcome back for our electrochemistry session. Today our subject is half cell. The objective of our study today, the objective are two. One should be able to describe what we call half cell, and then two you should also be able to describe a complete electrochemical cell, half cell, and then complete electrochemical cell. So we are going to start by looking at an electrochemical cell, but we are not going to define it directly as such. I will take you through step by step so that you understand what a half cell is from a half cell. Now we'll be able to know what voltaic cell means or what an electrochemical cell means. Remember we said that this topic is divided into three parts. One is redox reactions, which now we have cleared. We are going to apply those redox reactions that we have learned earlier. Into this second part, if you look at it, it's written on one, two, maybe the second part of this topic, which is now electrochemical cell. And then later we look at electrolytic cell. Now, what is this electrochemical cell? We must start by understanding what a half cell is. Now, like in the first point, we're told when a metal rod is put in a solution of its rod ions, some of the metal atoms ionizes and dissolve into the solution. You see, if, for example, I have a um, a solution which contains metal ions. Let us say that this is our metal rod. This is our metal rod. And that metal rod, that metal rod, this is metal M. Let us say metal M, it is a solid. And down here, we have a solution of M, let us say M positive, aqueous. It's like having sodium metal dipped into a solution of sodium chloride. That solution contains sodium ions. Or calcium metal dipped into a solution containing calcium ions. Copper metal dipped into a solution containing copper 2 ions. That's what I mean. Now, we all know that from our formal knowledge, from our formal knowledge, we know that matter is made up of tiny particles. This metal is matter. It is made up of atoms. So, we have atoms of M atoms of M. What that statement means is that the atoms of M the atoms of M will ionize if, for example, M is monovalent. If M is monovalent, I'm talking about monovalent. Milling has a valency of one, or a metal that loses one electron to become stable. If it is monovalent, if M is monovalent, then what will happen? L atoms will lose electron. Like if it is monovalent, it will lose one electron. So these atoms will lose electrons. The electrons will remain on the surface of the metal, but the positive ions will move into the solution. If it is divalent, okay, monovalent is something like sodium. See, sodium is two, eight, one. So sodium will have to lose one 
electron to form monopositive ion. Monopositive ion. Mono means what? If it is potassium, the same. If you lose one electron to form monopositive ion. But if it is dipositive, meaning two, a valence of two, or losing two electrons to become stable, then it will lose two electrons to form dipositive ions of M. If this metal is something like magnesium, which is 2H2, it will lose how many electrons? Two electrons to become to form ions. Where will the ions move? The ions will move into the solution. Electrons will remain on the surface of this metal. If it is tripositive, if it is trivalent, so if it is trivalent, then would you remember? Tri means three. A valence of three, it will lose how many electrons? Three electrons to form a stable ion. So these atoms will ionize to form a tripositive cut ion, meaning a positive ion, which will go into the solution. So in summary, in summary, in summary. If it is a monopositive metal, it will lose one electron. If it is a dipositive metal, it will lose two. Not dipositive, but divalent. If it is divalent, it will lose two electrons. If it is monovalent, losing one electron. Trivalent, like aluminium, the atoms will lose three electrons. And the ions will move into the solution, leaving electrons on the surface of the metal. Leaving electrons on the surface of the metal. So what will happen? On the surface of this metal, we'll have negative electrons. So the surface of the metal will become negatively charge the surface of the metal will become negatively charged so the electrons remain on the surface of the metal rod making it negatively charged making it negatively charged now the second thing that will take place the metal rod is therefore negatively charged but what about the solution surrounding what about the solution surrounding the what? The metal rod. That's what we are now going to explain. So we are saying M atoms are going into solution to form M ions by losing one electron. But something else will take place that as the atoms here loses electrons to form positively charged ions, the positively charged ions, some of those positively charged ions will recombine, they will again pick electrons to form neutral atoms. So there will be an equilibrium. It will be a reversible change. Metal atoms on this rod forming positively charged ions. The positively charged ions picking up the electrons again to form the neutral atom. So it is a backward, a forward and a backward process. And a point is reached where there will be an equilibrium. A point is reached where 
there will be an equilibrium. So such an equilibrium, such an equilibrium will cause. So equilibrium is established where the number of atoms losing electrons to become positive ions is equal to the number of positive ions picking electrons to become neutral atoms. So that forward and backward change will lead to an equilibrium. What will the equilibrium do? The equilibrium will result into the formation of a double layer, meaning these positive ions will form a layer inside the solution, like that. So the positive ions will form a layer around the negatively charged metal rod. So such that there is a, an area of, of charge density, a difference in charge density, where one side is positively charged, another side is negatively charged. Inside the solution, a layer of positive charge. On the surface of the metal rod, a layer of negatively charged metal rod. So this one leads to what is called an electric potential difference. Electric potential difference. Where we have the positive potential, electric potential, and negative electric potential positive electric potential just inside the solution negative electric potential just on the surface of the metal that difference in the electric potential is what will result into what we call the electron potential of that metal. So this potential difference where one part is negatively charged and the other part has a positive electric potential is what constitutes what is called electron potential of a metal. So what is this electron potential of a metal? If you look at what is happening here, what is causing the establishment of the electron potential or the difference in the charge density is the loss of electrons, ability of the metal to lose electrons. That is what is causing electrons to remain on the surface and the positive ions to move into the solution. So when we are defining an electron potential, we should not forget that whatever, what result, the process that brings it is actually loss of electrons. Therefore, electron potential is just a measure of the readiness of an element to lose electrons when placed in a solution that contains its what? Ions. The readiness of an element to lose electrons when placed in a solution that contains its ions. The readiness of, for example, for example, I can use for example I can use zinc rod placed in zinc sulfur. 
fit solution. This is a metal placed into a solution that contains its ions. Metal placed into a solution containing its ion. So that readiness, a measure of the readiness of this zinc metal to lose electrons when placed into a solution that contains zinc ions is what we call the electron potential of zinc. From that concept is grasped. Now, this setup, a setup where a metal is placed into a solution containing its rod ions is what we call a half cell. Like this one is now called zinc half cell. Zinc half cell. If I was using lead, Place into a solution containing lead two ions, for example, lead two nitrate. Then I will call it lead half cell. So half cell is simple as such. Just take a metal rod, place it into a solution that contains its ion. You have a half cell. Now from there we come to what is called electrochemical half cell. That is half cell we have said. Electrochemical half cell is a setup consisting of an electrode so this is zinc electrode for example this is zinc electrode a setup consisting of an electrode in contact with a solution that contains its what? ions an example is zinc electrochemical half cell which we have there in that diagram if that one is not clear, this one is much better. So that is an electrochemical half cell of zinc. Now, electron potential. Different elements have got different electron potentials. Different elements have different electron potentials. So what are these factors that will affect the electron potential of different elements. One is the type of the metal. How? We have metals that lose electrons very fast. And we have those metals which lose electrons at a slower rate. We don't expect potassium to have the same electron potential as silver. Reactivity will affect the electron potentials. That's one. Then number two, the concentration of the ions in the solution. When you have, have higher concentration of ions in the solution, then the electron potential will also change. Like I can have 0 0.5 molar zinc sulfate and in another setup I can have 1.0 molar zinc sulfate. I will not get the same, the same value. But for measurement purposes, we normally use one molar as a standard concentration. And then the temperature. The temperature normally affects the movement of the ions, the kinetic energy of the ions within a solution. And therefore, the temperature will also affect the electron potential. The temperature also affects the conductivity. So such factors will affect the electron potential. So electron potential is measured when the concentration of the ions is one molar and at a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. So if you want to carry out an experiment and come up with a value that other people can accept, one, you should do your experiment using this solution must be one molar and the temperature must be controlled and must remain 
at 25 degrees Celsius. One thing that we should note is that it is not possible to measure the electron potential of an element. There is no gadget, there is no instrument that you can place here between this positive layer and the negative rod. Then you measure the electron potential, the difference in the electric uh, potential. There is no instrument. What is normally done is to connect two half cells so that we can measure the difference in the potential between two half cells. You take half cell on one side, half cell on the other side. Then you connect them using conducting wire and something called uh, solid bridge. Then from there you can note the difference. But no instrument has been discovered that can measure the electric potentials directly. So that one brings us to the end of our discussion today. Make sure that you look for materials talking about electron potential. Because next time, in our next video, we are going to look at a complete electrochemical cell. Thank you for watching.